Hello guys. In this video, I want to bring you closer to my almost eight years of work on Lafe Carina that Tyrosinase Plus Snow project. Yet before that, I want to clear some things up about Anarian Exantic morphs because for a lot of people it seems to be an issue to recognize what is what and what's really proven until this day. And I don't really blame them because there is a lack of public information about both of the morphs. Plus, uh, a lot of imports has been sold as Xantic and Anari in past years, so it didn't make it easier as well. So I'm going to give you all the best of my own experience and my knowledge about the experience of my friends in the hobby. And we're going to focus only on the cases which are proven, at least to some point. Let's start with the Anari. As we all know, this morph states for the lack of red pigmentation. And if you know the species, it occurs mainly on the babies. Usually, the body color of normals and high yellows is something between orange and brown, and especially the ventral scales are orange or sometimes red, and of course the eyes. And that's why the honorary babies are born just gray. And later on, when they grow up to the ontogenesis, I mean the color change, which starts usually around 12 months of age, the juvenile starts to get some yellow coloration, since they are anary and not axantic. And the eyes of course stay gray, as those are orange or red for the whole lifetime with nominals. The only proven several times to be simple recessive anary line comes from Europe and it was over 10 years ago when it popped out at Czech Republic and some of the genes ended up in Denmark with 100% head pair from which I have bought 66 possible heads which proven to me to be 100% heads so that's why I breed the anaries and I also have an adult homozygous anary from the same line plus as a curiosity now we can see the honor line which I have from China and it's still unproven. I have this only this male and I think it's the most beautiful snake in my collection. I mean just look at him. The idea is to breed the, this line to the European line and check the compatibility between those two. So that's all what I wanted to clear about the honorees and now let's focus on Axantic. This morph determines the lack of yellow pigmentation. The visual change process is just opposite to anary. Axantic babies that we know do not show any markings what can be compared with axantic mandarin rat snakes. A proven simple recessive gene. Offsprings of those are even born with yellow colors which later start to fade at 10 to 12 month old snakes until they get black and white as adults. Backing to Carinata, during the ontogenesis the animals start to get white or very pale yellow coloration on the parts of their body which would normally be yellow at the nominal specimens of that age. Also, the eyes of genetic axantics should stay orange or red in opposite to anary. Until now, I'm aware only about two lines around European, UK or US market with at least some evidence of their genetic inheritance. One of those comes from same looking adults imported from China by Colubra and sold to my friend Davei Han in US. For the first time he bred them in 2020 and babies from this breeding proved to change into visual axantic after those two years. Since that was a visual to visual breeding, that fact did not prove that it's a simple recessive morph. Because we still cannot exclude, it may be a polygenic, some type of a dominant or individual variation of the locality. The fact that offsprings of those were darker than other normals also left some wondering. That's why Dawei bred his axantic male to one of his normal females in 2021. The offsprings of those breeding already started the color change and he have noticed some yellow, which is a positive news in hopes for the simple recessive gene. Yet the final conclusion can be made after he gets F2 generation looking axantic after the color change. The second line I know 
comes from a Xantic adult male which I bought in Europe in 2016 from a guy who had it from a guy who sold it because he was afraid of that snake. So I took it with zero knowledge about its genetic history and was able to breed it two times in 2018 with a classic and a T plus albino females. So that moment was also the beginning of the history of my T plus snow line. I kept all the babies from the T plus female, which are a perfect sex ratio combination of two males and five females, and one female from the axantic to normal breeding. Most of the babies after normal female were sent to a friend breeder in Japan and some ended up at US in the Wei Han place. This year, in 2022, both me and the Wei were able to breed the F1 together. He bred the axantic heads and I bred the head daughter to her axantic father. We tried to find some markings on the offsprings to possibly determine which ones should turn up axantic and which ones not but the differences are too small to point it out, so we will have to wait one more year. But this year I also bred my double head holdbacks from axantic to T plus breeding. And I was lucky enough to get offsprings of four from the five females. In search of the axantic markings, I still couldn't find any differences between classic looking offsprings, even when comparing with the axantic to head axantic breeding. Yet, after second shed of the babies of double heads, I have noticed the visual differences between the T plus albino looking babies. First, I was thinking it may be caused by the different levels of melanin content between the specimens. Yet I compared all of the albino babies and there were only two different phenotypes. The brighter ones, which I'm convinced there are snows, and the darker orange ones would I think are T plus albino with a 66% chance to be head axantic. And there are no specimens which look like something in between. Another factor that convinced me that there are snows is the fact that the differences are visible also in the same clutches. So it's not that the dark orange ones are just from female number one, and the bright ones comes from female number 2, 3 or 4. Also, there is one more argument backing up that my Xantic line is a simple recessive trait. All the F1 babies from both breeding of Xantic male, which are already 4 years old, are looking just like normal with yellow colors. None of the several F1 offsprings have shown any phenotype similarities of the Xantic father. Now, I know there is one more thing you guys want to know. I bet you wonder what the hell is this Carinada? This, my friends and hubby, is the grandmother of my most probably snow offsprings of this year. And I have truly no idea why she decided to turn out her yellow to white, at least on the top, in the age of 9 years. She's the one paired to the Axantic male in 2018 and the one that started the line. I imported this beauty in 2015 from a great guy, Arik Bill from San Antonio. Rest in peace, my friend. My first idea was to breed her with the European Anery line, which was at that time mistakenly called Axantic. And I'm happy I didn't and that I was lucky to find the true Axantic adult, because this year's offspring could look probably like snow white babies and after the color change they will have a phenotype of an albino just with white eyes. So how I imagine the T plus snows made on Axantic will turn up as adults? Well I think they will look similar to how their grandmother looks like now yet with no yellow at all and the rest of the pattern rather more pink than brownish. Imagine a pink and white snake over 2 meters long, rough scales with the ultimate predator look and personality. This image infested my mind around 9 years ago and pushed me to this moment. Everything should be 100% clear around 1 year from now. Yet I don't want to keep all the offsprings until that time. Since I'm not really a morph head and to be honest in 19 years of breeding, 
It was the first time experience in keeping the whole clutch of heads until the adulthood. Lucky for me it was just 7 snacks but still large ones and with a need of a lot of living space. 90% of my collection are just classic looking animals of different families, genus, species and localities. Therefore, selective breeding is what I prefer to use my very limited space and time for. The goal to produce the F2 generation and keep a snow holdback has been accomplished, so I'm willing to share the offsprings from this project with you guys. Therefore, reach me out if you're interested in jumping into the Snow T Plus train, which I have been pushing for the last several years. Before the end, I want to mention one thing. I'm aware about various different axantic and or unary looking black and white or grey carinata imports which came into European, UK, US market for the past 4 years. Some of them are looking like axantic with grey eyes, some with just yellow chin and so on. My friend in France, Max Bahalas, have several of those, yet still working to prove or not their genetic inheritance. But as far as I know, by myself and from discussion with my friends in the hobby, including the main importer of Carinada, Augusta from Colubra, who also works on some, there still aren't any other than mine F2 generation offsprings or evidences which we can prove or not the genetic inheritance of different axantic lines than those two that I was speaking about on this video today. So interesting things will probably come in the future, yet in this video I wanted to focus only on the facts which are known until now. By the way, if you know something I don't know or you have bred anything that should be mentioned and you have some evidences to back it up, then don't hesitate to reach me out or open a public discussion, like let's just share the knowledge. Thank you for your time and I hope that this video gave you a wider point of view on some of the morphs of my favorite snake species. Come back in one year from now to check the update video of the hopefully pink white juvenile snows in it. Postscriptum. On this channel from time to time I will post some videos of polypro terrariums and rack systems made by Future Terra, which is my company where we produce 100% recyclable enclosures from the most safe plastic available. The construction of our products, instead of gluing, is connected by super strong heat welding technology, which makes them as solid as one piece. So if you're interested in the best customized and custom sized enclosures on the market, just visit our website. If not, then ignore the videos titled as Future Terra.